Hey, Race Delicious, I am Keith Knight. I am creator of The Nightlife and The Cake Chronicles and Think, which I have a new book, a new book collection of. It's my third Think book. It's called Too Small to Fail. Check it out at kchronicles.com. So how's your con going so far? So far, so good. Um, today's been gangbusters, actually, Saturday, which actually in the past couple of years has been like the slow day because everybody usually goes up to check out all the movie panels. But maybe it has to do with the drop in movie studios coming here this year because it's been less than last year. But it's just much busier today, so I'm pretty psyched. And for the second year now, you've done uh, Nappy Hour. Uh, you said you, you, you created that as a way to bring some of the conversations that you had with other black creators out of, you know, uh, take some of those conversations and put them into a con setting. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, Nappy Hour originally was like this thing where we met up in a, a dive bar uh, just off the beaten path uh, in the gas lamp district. But as everything got has gotten busier and they, they did the baseball stadium, that little dive bar is no longer like the empty place anymore. So uh, I said, like, this is good timing to try to make this happen inside the con. And uh, so, you know, I got a great lineup together uh, last year with Dwayne McDuffie and Ned, Ned Cato and, and uh, C Spike Trotman and, uh, and an egg timer, which is the key to making a, a good, quick, fast, fast paced panel. And, uh, it was a real, real hit. So uh, this year we did it again. And this year you had uh, Michael Davis with the black panel on. Yep. Um, and there seemed to be a, a bit of a synergy between Nappy Hour and the black panel in that both of them, you know, were tributes to Dwayne McDuffie as, as part of the presentation. You know, give us a quick memory of Dwayne for for our readers. Yeah. Well, Dwayne, you know, was. It's funny because everyone has the same story about Dwayne, about how this guy was so busy, who did so much, accomplished so much in the industry, would take out, take so much time to, to, to talk with you. And, uh, and he was a real big supporter of me, especially me being a newspaper cartoonist, you know, amongst all the superhero stuff. He was always there and picked up every piece of, of work that I did. And, uh, and it was just really nice that he, he supported me so much. And it was a conversation with him that really got me to bring the nappy hour inside. And, uh, so it was nice of him to be on the panel. And uh, just after he passed, just hearing everybody's similar stories. And just how smart he was and how, how, how he shared so much with other people. He's a great guy, a really great person, and uh, one to emulate. Talk about your experience hosting a panel. It's different than just having a conversation with your buddies at the bar. And the, time, the, the timer is a great aid, but and, you know what else have you had to adapt to, to pull this off? Yeah, well, I was a little loose yesterday. I let, I let Michael talk a little bit because... I was a half hour late to his panel, <laughs> so uh, he, he could pretty much do whatever he wanted. Uh, but yeah, you know, you want people to make their points, have their points made. But one thing, and I think it got a little, I, 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 did, I let it go a little bit, but like, I want to make sure our panels are constructive without a lot of complaining. And I think there was a little bit too much complaining, but um, you know got to reel that in because there's so much positive stuff that we can talk about and, and you know so many things that we can accomplish in a positive way so um, you know a con isn't a con without a little bit of complaining right you know I mean isn't con the short version of convention con pros and con isn't yeah. that negative connotation anyway <laughs> How uh, how do you see conversations about diversity? You know, not just at this convention, but in fandom in general. How do you see those evolving over, over let's say, the past couple of years? Evolving. Well, I really like David Walker's point that like the con crowd, convention crowd, has become so diverse. I mean, you, you just look around and it's just like I'm looking around right now and just like the people who walk by, there've been like six 
uh, brown people and then uh, okay, two white people just walked by and uh, okay, there's a white guy, black girl, a white guy, but kids and, and uh, you know, I don't know, a brown kid, two brown kids, black girl, like, you know, it's very diverse, age-wise, sex-wise, uh, just, you know, it's it's great to see, and Dave Walker was saying, like, let's see that reflected in the comic books now, you know, 20 years ago, it used to be 40-year-old white guys in the audience, now that audience has changed, but it's still 40-year-old white guys in the comic books, let's see that change, too. Uh, and one of the points made at the panel was, you know, we're responsible for our own stories. Um, you know, having the internet now is a great equalizer, uh, I found. And now we have more outlets. Yeah. Why... I'll ask you what I asked yesterday to the panel. Why is there still this blind spot around so many of members of fandom when it comes to, to race in particular? Even among those who would... You know, normally define it as kind of progressive. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it's you know, it's one of those things where people need to be dragged, kicking and screaming into the future. And uh, you know, a lot of folks will won't may not admit uh, to their own biases or what they've been used to all these years. And making that transition may be hard. It may be they may be forced to do that transition. I'll tell you this, <clears throat> I've had a few, more than a few people after the panel come down and say, I just want to tell you, like, I wasn't there for your panel, I was there for the panel after, I was squatting, but your panel was like the best panel I've seen at the con, and it's just like, you guys touch on a lot of issues that you just don't hear in, in, in some of the other panels. And so those folks were like, you know, they were tricked into, into, into hearing it, you know, and that's that's some of the ways that needs, you know, that that people sometimes need to be tricked into into learning about that stuff. I tell you, I always talk about the Ken Burns um, documentaries on PBS because many of his his documentaries have a lot to do with race in America. There's the Civil War, baseball, jazz, even the, the national parks, how they talked about the um, Buffalo Soldiers were the first like park rangers. And and they, you know, a lot of people were being, you know, for the first time being told, like, you can't do that in this park by black people. And, uh, and so, you know, those aren't black history specials. They're Ken's, Ken Burns documentaries, but people learn about about black history through those documentaries. They get snuck in there. Yeah, well, where in a million, to, you know, they they'll see something during Black History Month, like a Black History Month special, and then a lot of a lot of white people won't watch that, you know. Be like, but everybody likes baseball. Yeah. Well, either you like it or hate it, but um, still, even if you don't if you don't like the game, like that documentary is great, you know. The biggest thing, though, was, um, what's his name, um, the guy who, who was the Negro League player who became a big... Buck O'Neill? Yeah, Buck O'Neill. He didn't make it to the Hall of Fame when he was alive, you know, and, and like, these writers wouldn't get him in the Hall of Fame, like, in his last year in life, and then when he passed, they put him into the Hall of Fame, which totally bugs the hell out of me, you know. But, you know, just for his performance in that documentary, like, being the star of that documentary, he was, he was, it was worth him getting into the whole thing. Well, that's it for now. Tell, again, tell our readers again where to find you online. Uh, KChronicles.com, K-C-H-R-O-N-I-C-L-E-S, and also NightlifeComic.com. And the book is Too Small to Fail? Too Small to Fail. All right, Keith, thanks a lot for your time. All right, thanks a lot.